Folks, it is time once again for the Freakers Ball Show, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com and other places. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday night, June 21st, 2019. Welcome to the summer. That's right, today is the summer solstice, right here on this planet commonly called Earth, at least by its inhabitants, you know... I, I say commonly, but, you know, there's a big-ass universe out there, and there's billions and billions of various other things, creatures, races, species, whatever you want to call them, and they probably, if they know about this place, don't call it Earth. Just we do down here on this measly little speck of dust in the middle of nothing. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, we are live right now, as I said, on com on the Freakers Ball Show page. You can also catch the video live on vaughn.live slash Media. The audio stream goes everywhere. Uh, I say everywhere, but not quite everywhere. But it goes a lot of places. It goes to RLM Radio, RLM Radio XYZ. It goes to freedomsnetwork.com. It goes to realliberty.org. Uh, it's not actually on Minds, but they get notified about it, as do the Twitter people. Yep, all those. It is on Internet Radio and TuneIn.com and other places like that. But you really want to be on the video uh, there, either on the Freakers Ball Show page or on the Vaughn Live place over there. So uh, take your pick your poison, whatever you like, really. Uh, I, I just enjoy the video as I'm doing that. And you come over here and you jump on into the chat. You can talk to all the folks that are over here. we got a bunch of folks. How many of them are actually paying attention? Well, that remains to be seen. But they're here. <laughs> so, so uh, uh, it's happy happy to have you all hanging around, coming along with us. Oh, howdy over there, Liberty Cat, on the tweeter. Good to see ya. All right. Uh, also, the happy, hi, and happy, howdy. Hi and happy. Hi and howdy to the folks over there on RealLiberty.org, FreedomsNetwork.org, Minds.com, and various other spots around the interwebs. But mostly, and I say mostly because I get to interact with them, are the folks here in the RLM, the Real Liberty Media chat on IRC.Freenode.net, which you can access via the RealLibertyMedia.com page or the RLMRadio.xyz page. Either one, pick your poison, unless you have your own IRC client installed, in which case, use it. Jump on to irc.freenode.net and hook on into Pound Pound Real Liberty Media. And you'll be here with us, with all these great folks. Uh, we do have a bunch of good folks here tonight. We got uh, myself and the barman. We got Mr. D.C. and Asmo and Jell Sedoni and Don C. and the Java Doctor. Mr. Meister Brow, a.k.a. Woodman, the Ponder Gander, a.k.a. Vin E. Uh, Miss Kate, what are you, Miss Kate? Uh, you've, been, you've been real quiet these past little while here, Miss Kate. Anyway, um, Rob works and trust no one. And then we got the Vanna White Bot and the Weather Dork Bot and the Phantom. Uh, Mr. And Well Then, a.k.a. other names. Uh, Beetle and Circle and Cyborg Doodle and Flash Somebody. Which I can't believe Flash is still up at this time of day, or maybe not still up, but up again. So, uh, yeah, she's been around. Uh, Rome, Rome says she's been MIA, but not really MIA. I, I've seen her say a few words here and there, but uh, she's been quieter. Then we got the Frumpty Frumpty, uh, Frumpy Frumpty, <laughs> and Gromit and JJ and Kiss and Moe. Miss Moose Girl, where the heck are you, Miss Moose Girl? Uh, you're supposed to be like calling in and shit, you know? Uh, be a part of the show. Mr. Sock Puppet and the Smart As AI sort of bot thing. <laughs> oh, there she is. There's the Miss Kate. Yeah, hey, been out and checking out new places. Places? You're going to move? No, you're not going to move. That's that when she wants to talk about something else. Not going to move. I can't imagine that. Anyway, um, I, I had a, there was a, I noticed a problem today over on the Freedoms Network. Uh, social networking site that's kind of associated, tied in 
with the, with the Real Liberty Media site and also the RealLiberty.org site, which is another social networking site. But uh, it was a problem, and nothing would post. It wouldn't take any of the posts unless, and I found this out, uh, unless you posted a video or a photo, then nothing would post. And so just like a regular comment or a link to an article or whatever, nothing would post without that. So I went in, I did some troubleshooting, and I uh, so disabled certain plugins and tried that and that and that, and nothing was working. It, it, nothing changed. Uh, and then I noticed that it was also happening on realliberty.org uh, that nothing was going to post either. And, and, and I thought, okay, I, I could sit, spend time here, go through this, troubleshoot this. But my thought was, do I really care? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I would really like somebody to, uh, I say take over, which is, would be the preference, the ultimate preference. But if not that, at least step up and fill in. Somebody that knows WordPress, somebody that knows BuddyPress, uh, you don't even have to know BuddyPress. Uh, it's just uh, just consider it as another plugin that works there. But uh, it would really be nice to have somebody take Freedoms Network off my hands, off my... Uh, and and I, I say that as, as if it's mine, but it's not mine. Well, it belongs to Bo and I. Uh, but, you know, we don't see Bo very often. Um, so... And, and it's not like I have to do a lot of work on it at all, but there there is some maintenance that needs to be done. So it would be nice if somebody would take step up and take freedomsnetwork.com, take control there of that. That would be awesome. <laughs> anyway, enough of that uh, stuff there. Um, what else do I have to tell you about? Uh, nothing really exciting has been going on. Uh, in in my world, everything's been kind of slow and just kind of uh, mellow, I guess, floating along. No real changes of anything. Uh, I'm trying to do my garden. I don't even know if it's going to go. I, I I don't I don't think it's really going to grow uh, this year. Maybe the stuff that I've got going in in the, in the jiffy pots will work because uh, look at those carrots are, are looking like they're going to do something. Maybe. Not carrots. Tomatoes. Um, I don't have any carrots. <laughs> I'm not growing any carrots. Um, so I, I'm thinking maybe next year is, is going to look better for the garden if I maybe get the right dirt. I, don't, I think maybe that's the problem there with that. And I, I, you know, I don't really care so much, but I was hoping for some stuff. But I got the other stuff in the Jiffy Pots. If those work, hooray. If not, eh, eh, what do you do? Uh, it, it was just something to think about. Well, I, I don't know where Moose Girl is. She should have called in by now. Um, but she has a not. So, yeah, Flash says he will do it, but... Yeah, Flash, um, what do you know about WordPress, man, dude? Um, I appreciate it, really, I do. But I, I need somebody that's got some kind of background or understanding of the basic workings of, of that kind of setup. It's not that hard. Uh, but it takes a little time to get used to. Anyway, uh, um, so if you really want to, I'll, I'll be glad to show you as much as I possibly can if you're interested in learning that kind of stuff. Um, and that would be cool. That would be really cool. Uh <laughs> anyway, but, but I was hoping for somebody with a little more or some experience uh, in in the area. <laughs> I know, I know, but uh, but I will certainly I am certainly glad to uh, instruct anyone on such things, uh, whether whether it's for that site or for your own site. If you want to start your own website and you have no idea how to do anything, I'll show you. I'll set, get you set up with with a WordPress, or if you just want to do a, your own. Uh, site with without some kind of CMS built in. I'll show you how to do that too. Uh, it's it's all it's all very simple. Um, well, yeah, it's all very simple when you've been doing it for a while. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Uh, I just I just thought I'd throw it out there. Like I said, it's not really that big of a deal. It's not very much work. Uh, it's just something that I have to uh, consider from time to time. Uh, uh, oh well. I look at it daily to make sure everything's up to date and 
uh, refresh and uh, see if there's any updates or changes or uh, new stuff I need to add. Eh. Anyway, whichever. Um, I'm going to play some music because Moose Girl ain't here. And, um. Well, whoop. there's going to be that music. Not that music. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, no, not that music. We already played that music. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is Ronald Reggae. Is this a real leaf? All right, that there was a Boost Girl request, and I, I put that into the opening set. Because I made an assumption, which you should never do, but I made an assumption that Moose Girl was going to be here. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, that was the infamous String Dusters with a Truth and a Love. Before that was Ghoul Town with I Am The Night. And we kicked it off with Ronald Reggae and Jamaican Rhapsody. Uh, yeah, yeah, interesting stuff, huh? All right, so, uh, anyway, I wonder where that Moose Girl's at. She didn't tell me she wasn't going to be here. So, you know, whatever. It, it is what it is. It, it is what where, wherever she may be. Where, where's my getting cursor? My cursor flat all over the place. <laughs> did, I, did I do that right? I don't even know what I did there. Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> See, I got a mute button on my keyboard right next to my delete button. And uh, that's that's a dangerous place for that to be, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully she'll show up soon, Miss Moose. I, uh, I really, I really like it when she is here with us, with me, doing this show. And I'm sure you all like it better when she's here as well, because she's far more exciting of a speaker than I. She uh, She's more uh, animated, not like a cartoon. <laughs> ah, you know what I mean. All right, well, let's see what kind of goodies we got lined up for you here tonight. People are talking about the uh, crypto stuff going on there in the chat. And, you know, uh, today, uh, the Bitcoin made it back up over the $10,000 per Bitcoin markage. Um, so, uh, that's something. It's significant. Although, it does be really no good at all. All of my crypto coins are in the shitter. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, the, 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 the main exchange that was trading most of my, my coins was Bittrex, and Bittrex kicked out all of the weed coins. And I'm a weed coin guy, so my weed coins have all suffered dramatically. And Dogcoin, Dogecoin, I guess, is not doing all that well either. So uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm hurting big time as far as cryptos go. But that's, you know, that's, it is what it is. However, gold and silver both moved up nicely on the day. Gold is at like a five-year high. Um, silver, not so much, but silver is up from where it were. Yeah, the Doge is sitting down there at 31. Uh, come on, Doge, move it on up. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll start with this because I got a kick out of it when I read it, and I wish it were true. <laughs> Oh, man. Come on, load up here. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> there we go. This is uh, on the Babylon Bee. Those of you familiar with the Babylon Bee will get it right away. Those of you that are not familiar with the Babylon Bee, it may take you a couple of sentences. But here you go. Report. Internet users who call for attacking other countries will now be enlisted in the military automatically. Hansel? Hey, Hansel? Oh, you're already in the military, huh? Well, at least you say you are. <laughs> True or not, I don't know. Anyway, a new policy issued by the U.S. Department of Defense 
in conjunction with online platforms like Twitter and Facebook, will automatically enlist you to fight in a foreign war if you post support for attacking another country. People who bravely post about how the United States needs to invade some country in the Middle East or Asia or outer space will get a pop-up notice indicating they've been enlisted in the military. A recruiter will then show up at their house and whisk them away to fight in the foreign war they wanted to happen so badly. Frankly, recruit, recruitment numbers are down, and we needed to find uh, some way to find people who are really enthusiastic about fighting wars, said a DOD official. Then it hit us like a drone strike. There are plenty of people who argue vehemently, vehemently for foreign interventions. It does not matter what war we're trying to create. Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, North Korea, China. These people are always reliable supporters of any invasion abroad. So why not get them there on the front lines? After all, we want people who are passionate about occupying foreign lands, not grunts who are just there for the paycheck, he added. Strangely, as soon as the policy was implemented, 99% of the saber-rattling suddenly ceased. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Babylon Bee. Oh, the onion only wishes they could be as good. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to see that come into effect, however. You know, all those people out there that think the uh, United States needs to go attack somebody, get on it! Get on it! Get right on it! I, how am I Grimnir 9? Oh, Grimnir, I was Grimnir 9. Okay, never mind. So, hey, Beth Z. <laughs> Me. <laughs> well, I may be animated like uh, like uh, Homer Simpson or somebody. I don't know. <laughs> don't. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <coughs> now, this next article, you may think is from an a satire site. However, it is not. It is a good plan, Flash, isn't it? Send all them people that really love war into it. Go on. Get on over there. <laughs> get your butts out of here. You know, that, that'll, that'll fix it up real quick. And they should start off with all those people in D.C., all the senators and congressmen and presidents and stuff like that. Um, yeah, anybody that says we need a war, send them over. Get them on in there. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, Benoit is here with us, too. Hey, Ben, what the heck's going on, buddy? All right, from LiveScience.com, posted a week ago today, last Friday night, uh, Star Trek logo spotted on Mars. It looks just kind of pretty much exactly like the Star Trek logo, if you ask me. So NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter spotted a feature on Mars that looks like the famous Star Trek logo. You know, the little thing they had on their shirts, like a little triangle with a little, little different triangle cut out of the bottom. It looks like the Starfleet is literally embedded on the planet next door. A dune in the shape of the famous logo from Star Trek appears prominently in a new picture from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter MRO. Even Captain Kirk himself, the actor William Shatner, has weighed in. Don't expect Spock, Jean-Luc Picard, or Michael Burnham squatting nearby, however. Just like the famous face on Mars, the Starfleet, Starfleet logo was produced by random chance as wind, lava, and other forces sculpted the Martian landscape. Enterprising viewers will make the discovery that these features look conspicuously like the famous logo. A University of Arizona, uh, which manages the MRO High Resolution Imaging Science Experiment camera, said in a statement, You'd be right. 
but it's just a coincidence. Ain't it? Ain't it? <laughs> I don't know. I have to get Scotty to beat me up over there and see what the hell's going on. Because I, I don't know. The dune feature is located in the Hellas Plan Planitia, a large plain in the Hellas Impact Basin in the southern hemisphere of Mars. An interaction of dunes, lava, and wind form the chevron-shaped shape visible in the picture. According to the statement, uh, MRO has photographed many other chevrons on Mars, so we're guessing this is not the first time it spotted a Star Trek logo. Uh, scientists working with the high-rise instrument, uh, in instrument have spent years studying features they see in Mars images. And they think they have a good sense of how this particular shape came to be. Uh, the story starts with the crescent-shaped sand dunes where wind and the surface interacted. William Shatner tweeted out, by the way, "Hey, Star Wars, will you hurry up and your, you will you hurry up, your rebel scum? We beat you." <laughs> uh, anyway, it explains here how how they think the. Uh, Star Trek logo wound up over there on Mars. You can take a look at it, man. I'm telling you, it looks just like the uh, Star Trek logo. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, beat me up already. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. That is funny. All right. I thought it was funny. Anyway. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Now I have several articles about this next thing, but uh, you you and 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 you may have heard from some of the uh, more clappy sites out there, the uh, corporate layman's propaganda sites out there, that if you have um, kids that use cell phones a lot, that it's possible or probable or well uh, uh, actually let me let me get let me hit the clap story first on this. Because, um, yeah, nonsense. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll do the clap story first because, um, because it's all lies. It's all lies, um, and, and 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 you need to know about it because, come on, seriously. <laughs> all right, so here it is from uh, uh, this is this is posted on. Science alert, but but they pulled all these various places, uh, pulled pulled their uh, stories from a Washington Post post, which was absolute crap nonsense. But they say young people are growing weird bumps on their skulls. Evidence shows bullshit, 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 bullshit. <laughs> I'm not I'm not even going to go into their article. On it, I'm going to take you right over uh, on over to the ARS article um, because uh, this this is the one you need to see, not not this one that's giving you the propaganda, but the other one uh, that 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 gives you the straight poop on this from ARS Technica, Ars Technica. Debunked the absurd story about smartphones causing kids to sprout horns. Vinny, <laughs> Vinny, wake up. Horns or not, the news coverage will make you want to ram your head into something. This article posted by Beth Mole uh, on Ars Technica uh, as of today. The Washington Post on Thursday published a story suggesting the use of mobile devices is causing young people to sprout horns from their skulls. But a look at the scientific data, <laughs> let me put air quotes around that, scientific data, because, yeah, it's not really scientific data. Behind the story finds that such a splashy takeaway is tenuous at best and atrocious reporting at worst. And it is atrocious reporting. The Post story was print, was primarily based on a study published back in February 2018 by two Australian researchers. It earned fresh attention last week after being mentioned in a BBC feature 
on how modern life is supposedly transforming human, the human skeleton. The study, published by Nature's Open Source Journal Scientific Reports, which is supposedly peer-reviewed, let me take a, a slight second here, peer-reviewed. What exactly does that mean? Let's say I wrote an article about about uh, something just goofy. I don't know, what, whatever. Uh, ghosts coming out of politicians' assholes. That's all right, Moose Girl. It's all right. So I, I read an article about ghosts coming out of politician assholes and, and printed it up uh, as a story. And people said, hey, this is not peer-reviewed. So I got everybody here in the Real Liberty Media to review it. You're all my peers, right? So if you all look at the article that I wrote up about whatever, then my article is now peer-reviewed. <laughs> That's all peer-reviewed means. They try to make it sound like peer-reviewed that that's actually done something. It's not. Whatever. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay, where, where, was, where was I? <laughs> all right. So the uh, study published in Nature's Open Source Journal and Scientific Report, which is supposedly peer-reviewed, but the study has significant limitations and flaws, and the Post breezed over them for a sensationalized story. Perhaps the most striking problem are that the study makes no mention of horns. It does include does not include any data whatsoever on mobile device usage by its participants who, according to the Post, are growing alleged horns. Also troubling is that the study authors don't report much of the data and some of the results blatantly conflict with each other. So their own report doesn't even really talk about the data and some of the stuff that they do report disagrees with other stuff that they report. <laughs> Last, it appears that the study's lead author, David Shahar, a chiropractor and biomechanics researcher at the University of Sunshine Coast in Queensland, has a financial incentive to convince people that their modern lifestyles are deforming their skeletons. Shahar goes by the name Dr. Posture online and has developed devices and techniques to prevent such posture problems. At the time of his writing, uh, his devices were not available on Amazon, however. <laughs> All of this did not stop the post, WAPO, from, uh, from writing an uncritical article with the headline, Horns are growing on young people's skulls. Phone use is to blame, research suggests. <laughs> so, yeah, let's bend our heads down to a posture-damaging angle and dig into this study. First of all, they're not horns. As mentioned, the study does not actually deal with horns. What the Post is referring to in its headline, and what it calls in the article, horn-like spikes, are actually small bone spurs. And these spurs don't occur on either side of the skull as horns, but do on the back of the skull at the base. The bone spurs jut off what's called an external occipital protuberance, EOP, of the skull. This is the point at the back of the head where important ligaments that run along the spine attach, as do neck muscles. The EOP can be prominent, if you feel the back of your own head, you may feel a hard lump where the EOP is. It tends to be more noticeable in men, and forensic scientists have used the EOP size to determine the gender of damaged corpses and human remains. Like all places in the body where ligaments and muscles attach to the bones, overuse of these uh, uh, overuse and tensile stress can trigger further bone growth forming in, in, in desophytes, uh, I think that's how you say that, these are abnormal bony projections, bone spurs, 
In the study, Shahar and his co-author Mark Sayers call these EOP burn spurs elongated EOPs or EEOPs, whatever they're called. The most important thing to know about them is that they're absolutely not important. While their presence may be a subtle hint that a person is straining their neck muscles too much, they are otherwise inconsequential to your health. They don't cause pain or any other symptom. They are unnoticeable unless you specifically look for them in medical images, which doctors tend not to do because there's no point. <laughs> There's no data to suggest an increased prevalence of these bone spurs. In their study, Shahar and Sayers pulled pre-existing x-ray images from 1,200 cryo chiropractic patients aged 18 to 86 years old. Patient ages were fairly evenly distributed through the age groups, and gender distribution was also even among the groups. And they found that around 25% of the people 60 years and older had the bone spurs, which isn't surprising given that, given that they could develop over a lifetime of muscle use. The younger group had a lower prevalence, with the notable exception of the 18 to 30 year old crowd, which had a bone spur prevalence in the range of 40%. Anyway, let me just get down, throw all the way down to the bottom of this here. Actual takeaways. The landman or landman concludes that the study should be interpreted cautiously, that the authors should explain their data better. Moreover, he doesn't think that anybody should be worried about bone spurs on the back of their skull. The spur itself is not likely to ever be symptomatic. That said, he recommends that people with neck and upper back pain to be mindful of your posture. He recommends holding your phone higher to keep from bending your neck too much. It adds that texting with two thumbs is better than one. I, I, whatever. Uh, good posture, he emphasizes, <laughs> involves having an ear canal directly above the shoulders. Da 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 da. Anyway, um, it's all nonsense. It's all freaking nonsense. Uh, and, and, <laughs> And, and and it, it was uh, clickbait. I think that's the the proper term, clickbait. And uh, you, what are you going to expect from the Washington Post, the fakest of fake news even out there? It's just absolutely crazy crap. And um, <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. Oh man, I, I just is these kind of things. And and, and the thing about it. As soon as it was put out there by the Washington Post, it was picked up wide by all of the rest of the clap outlets. Every corporate lame ass propaganda outlet out there started picking it up. You probably, if you see your local news, saw it on your local news. If you follow any of the big news organizations on Twitter, you saw it there too. Everybody was thinking, oh no, my kid's got to be growing devil horns because of his cell phone usage. Nonsense. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Kate points out that she thinks there's higher risk than never looking up from a mobile device when you're walking. Yes, indeed. And, and we know that we've read stories where people have been damaged and or killed uh, by looking down at their cell phones while they're doing other things. Whether they're walking or driving or picking their nose. I don't know. What, whatever they're doing. Um yeah, these these little bone spurs that you may develop, you'll never even know about, and uh, you're not you're not gonna turn into the devil's next child because of that kind of crap. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> uh, let me clear this. I I, I I had more stories about that. Um, from a few other places. <laughs> They're in my list of stuff here. Oh, man. All right. Ah. Okay. Where are we now? Um, okay, let's do this one, and if Moose is not here yet, then we'll go to some music. Uh, and this one, I, I just like it because, well, I hate the whole global warming hoax thing that, that, that's been going on for so long and 
and and there's also been reports recently about how much ice Greenland was was losing this year. They they lost uh, 18 million pounds of ice or whatever the hell. Uh, okay, Moose, I'll, I'll cover this story. I'll play some music. Hopefully, it'll be done by then. Anyway, here we go. On IceAgeNow.info, posted by Robert a um, couple days ago, NASA says the largest glacier in Greenland is growing for the third year in a row. Yes, the height of the Jacob Jacob Chavin Glacier in western Greenland has increased by as much as 30 meters, 98 feet per year in some areas. That's about the height of a 10-story building uh, per year. The thickening is occurring across an increasingly wide area. Although the glacier has spent decades in retreat, scientists observed an unexpected advance between 2016 and 2017. In addition to growing towards the ocean, the glacier was found to be slowing and thickening. The, the third uh, scientists attribute the change to cool ocean waters. The third straight year of thickening in Greenland's uh, biggest glacier supports our conclusion that the ocean is the culprit, said Josh. The culprit, as if it's a bad thing. <laughs> said John well it's a bad thing for their agenda for their global warming agenda but it's, in reality it, it's a fine it doesn't matter one way or the other glaciers grow they shrink they, they chip some off new, new ice grows it's just the way glaciers work you know uh, but it, it is likely that now that we are in the maunder minimum here maunder minimum whatever the solar the solar minimum um, at this point in time it's 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 highly likely that uh, we're going to wind up into another mini ice age here. Anyway, that was according to Josh Willis, an ocean scientist at NASA's JPL and principal investigator of the ocean melting oceans melting Greenland mission. <laughs> See, his mission is the ocean causing Greenland to melt. That's his mission. That's his job. <laughs> so he's calling this a culprit. Anyway, the maps here show how the glacier's height changed between March 2016 and 2017, and uh, then March 2017 to 2018, and then March 2018 and 2019. The elevation data came from a radar altimeter that has been flown on research airplanes since spring as part of the the Ocean Melting Greenland. You, you, you want the acronym? You got that? OMG! <laughs> Yes, that is the actual acronym. OMG! Freak out! <laughs> Freak out! <laughs> OMG! All right, blue areas represent where the where the glacier's height has increased in some areas by as much as thirty meters per year. Uh, the change is particularly striking at the glacier's front uh, between 2016 and 2017. That's when the glacier advanced the most replacing open water and sea ice with towering glacial ice. Uh, the glacier has uh, not advanced as much since then, but it continues to slow and thicken. Willis and colleagues think the glacier is reaching or reacting to a shift in climate pattern called the North, At uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, which has brought cold water northward along Greenland's west coast. Measurements of the temperatures collected by the OMG uh, team show that the cold water has persisted. <laughs> the team will go back to Greenland in August, hoping for some melting. Please give us some melting. Oh. <laughs> yes, even atheist day. OMG. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's play some music here. We got a chick set for you. We got a full-on chick set. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy this if you're a chick. And if you're not a chick, hopefully you enjoy the chicks. But it's all a chick set. Yeah, some hot chicks, baby. Let me tell you. All right, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kick it off with the interrupters, uh, starring uh, Amy Interrupter herself. This is called I uh, or no, it's called gave you everything. It's an acoustic version. All right. 
that there. Uh, so, and I have to apologize, first off, starting off here, for the audio quality of those last two videos, but they're great songs, and so I just had to play them anyway. Anyway, that was uh, Carolyn Wonderland doing Elmore James uh, there to close it out. Uh, before that, we had Joan Jett and the Blackhearts with I Love Rock and Roll. Uh, that was just from a couple months ago here, uh, May 18th here this year, uh, out there in Camden, New Jersey. So uh, lovely stuff. She's still out there rocking and rolling and doing a great job. And we kicked it off with the Interrupters, gave you everything, an acoustic version there. And by the way, those of you that don't know, she does not go by Amy Allen any longer. She goes by Amy Interrupter. So, uh, just a note there for you. <laughs> yeah, Amy Interrupter, that's her name. Uh, well, at least that's the name she's going by at this point in time. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. She, uh, she, you know, she, she, she just wants to be part of the band. She, does, she doesn't, she doesn't want to be uh, recognized any differently uh, than the rest of the band. So, loose girl. Hello, am I turned down here? I may have turned my volume down. Hola. Oh, there you are. Okay. Hey. Can you hear me? <laughs> what is going on? I don't know what's going on. I I, I never. Hello. Heard. Yes. Can you not hear me? Am I muted? Hey. Hello. No, I'm here. I'm not muted. I see my I see my voice. I hear you now. Okay. Hang on. Let me turn my headset up. All right. There. Oh, I was down at 34. <laughs> That's why I couldn't hear you. Ah. All right. All right. How's it going? Oh, it's going fine. It's going fine. How you doing? I'm doing good. Sorry, I was late. I was at the bar talking to people. <laughs> And I look at the clock, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm late. And they're like, what? And I'm like, on my show. <laughs> so I'm holy a, shit. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming you were at the bar with Ben? No. no. Oh, okay, because he came in right when you did, so. Oh, no, no. Not mm, at all, okay. no. I figured. I was it. with my friends Greg and Sandy and their friend, and then I know other people there, like the workers at the bar, you know. Ah, okay, okay, cool. But, yeah, um, it was, uh, I lost track of time. All right. Unfortunately. Well. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 uh, I even opened my email to see if you'd send, like, a text or something. Oh, but... yeah, see, and by the time that I realized I was late, I'm like, well, it's 10.20, I'm like, I'm already fucking late. Like, <laughs> and then oh, they uh, don't have good cell service at that bar. Like, I can't. I could have tried to send you a text at that point. I'm like, fuck it. I'll just wait till I get home. Yeah, no, that's cool. Talk that's all right. The chat and like, okay. Uh, that's cool. No problem. <laughs> no. Okay. So before the the current style of five dollar bill that we have. Yeah. The one before that. Okay. Yes. Not when they. Back in time, whatever. The one before the one we have now. Okay? okay? The old style before the one we have now. Okay. I have two of those. All right. One of them I got at a Ron Paul rally like 10 years ago. Okay. And the other one I got this year when Zach and I were in Menominee having lunch at this bar and grill. Right. And I get change back because I paid in cash. Okay. And I look down, and it's, it's one of the old style fives. Ah. And I'm like, sweet. I go, oh, my God. And Zach's like, what? I'm like, this is the old style five. And he's like, let me see. He looks at it. He's like, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So now I have two of them. Because when I get old money like that, when it's like supposed to be out of circulation, uh -huh. I keep that shit. Good. No, that's good. It's worth money. It's worth more than five bucks. Right probably, now. yeah. It's probably worth five dollars and a quarter. Yeah, but still worth more than five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Good. anyway, um, I have to really find out if this rumor that's going around is true. It, this, I just saw this just before I, I, you call, I called. Yeah. Um, that Jeff Austin had passed away. Who's that? He is a guy that started with Yonder Mountain Stringman. He's a mandolin player. Oh, 
Okay. And I think it's a rumor. I think it's a, it's some sick fucking person like just started a rumor. Right, right. But it's like I looked on Twitter and there was like some people on there saying that it's true. And I I'm like, what? Wow, he, just... he just played it last like last weekend. Like this can't be true. This cannot be correct. Uh, okay. I think it's one of those rumors that go, you know, what people start. And why would you do that? Why would why would some sick fucker do that? I don't know, but here's some here's some tweets. Uh, Sean Sean Ingo, I think it's Sean in Colorado says, "Holy yeah. shit! I just heard Aust- Je- Jeff Austin died. Can anyone confirm?" I'm looking at that right now. The next guy says, "While jam bloggers are hiding under desks, we are working hard to, confirm, hard to confirm if the rumors about Jeff Austin are true." Right. Uh, rest in peace, Jeff Austin, you coked out punk fuck. And Mando player. Um, Another living legend gone? What? Sleep easy, King Ebenezer. I don't think it's... Uh, and and there's, there's, there's somebody asking like me, who's Jeff Austin? <laughs> he has been having health issues lately, but I, I'm i just like, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he did open with Death Trip at Blue Ox, man, and he had a, he's been having some health issues, I know that. But... Well, here's his. Uh, uh, is this him? Uh, Jeff. Jeff Austin. Jeff Bo Austin. Is that him? No. Okay. Somebody says follow him on Twitter. He's, his name is Jeff Bo Austin. Um, oh, there's him. another Austin. Uh, there's another Jeff Austin. To Jeffrey pa- Papi Austin. Hmm. I don't know. Um. Well, here's some free music you can download from him. Uh, he looked. Uh, <laughs> Okay, but he didn't look totally healthy. I mean, I don't know. I okay, know. I'm not going to focus on that right now. It's probably just a, one of those, you know, fake fucking... But why... Why? I, I, I mean, nobody's ever even heard of the guy. Well, he's in, he started with Yonder Mountain String Man. He's a bluegrass guy. He's a mandolin player. I okay. mean, people that aren't into bluegrass or whatever, they're not going to know who the fuck he is. You, you got to be in the bluegrass to know who the fucker is. Right. He's not like a huge celebrity. You know what I mean? He's right. not like Madonna or something. Yeah. Whatever. He He's huge in the bluegrass world right now. Right. But other than that, if you're not in the bluegrass, you're not going to know who the fuck he is. No. Yeah. Okay. But anyway. Um, All right. So Blue Axe happened. Oh, go ahead. Did you have something? No, no. Go ahead. Say Blue Ox happened. Blue Ox happened last we week. We had the storm on Friday. Yeah. It totally soaked my tent. Ben was like camp, uh, camping by me, and he had to hold down the goddamn shit. I was in my car, okay? I was in my car in the field, parked. Yeah. And the storm's ripping through, and I'm watching the wind pick up. I'm watching all this, you know, from my car. All of a sudden, the car starts shaking a little bit. I'm like, okay, if this car shakes more than this, I'm going to start freaking out a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it wasn't hailing where I was, anyway. But there were some trees that came down in the, the campground. No injuries that I've heard of. No cars being destroyed or anything. But um, it was quite the storm for, like, a couple hours. And then yeah. it stopped raining. And they shut down the music, though, for four hours because there was uh, fun lightning all around. Because we were actually, we were actually, um... Yeah, Kate was commenting while, while the uh, Balls to the Wall was going last week that this uh, this band Storm. this band called Rain Delay was playing for quite a long time. Yes, the Rain <laughs> Delay. Yeah. So what happened was Pertner was supposed to do a set Friday and Saturday, so they just got rid of their Friday set so they could fit fruition in for half an hour. Yeah. You know? And then they had to adjust the schedule, but it all worked out well. I mean, you can't control the weather. You know what I mean? And you can't have a bunch of people standing in a fucking field, in an open field, when there's lightning all around. No, that'd be stupid. Yeah, you don't want that. You know, yeah, you don't want yeah. people getting hurt. No, no, not for a, no. And so, uh, yeah, it was just... Uh, uh, it was intense for that, but that other than that, it was good. Cool. The weather was good. It wasn't hot. It was cool. You know, it didn't get hot at all. Yeah, we checked and, your weather, uh, too. Yep. 
<laughs> uh, I was sitting in the field in my car during that. Yeah. And so then I get back to my site, and everything soaked, which was fine. It was fine. The, only the one side of my tent. It, my tent wasn't completely flooded. Right. But, I mean, because I was using my old tent. Yeah. So it's not, it wasn't waterproof, and it's like 20 years old. It's just like, it did not cut it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It would have been fine if it didn't rain and shit, but no. It, but it, and I ended up sleeping in there that night, so it wasn't that bad, you know what I mean? Sure. But anyway, it was, yeah, other than that part, it was really good. Cool. So, um, yeah, it was fun. So here is an article that... Some people wrote about Blue Ox, and I'll just post this in there, because there's some pictures from the fest in this article. Okay. And some people traveled from, uh, I believe, Milwaukee area, and they did a report on the Blue Ox Music Festival. All right. For this year. And that if you if you scroll down the second picture on that, you'll see this banjo. I know the people that made that banjo. They're from Eau Claire. Woodchuck Camping Area. Yeah, go scroll down one more picture. Right, that big, that old, big old banjo there. looking thing. And that thing has been there for two years now. Okay. Some friends of mine made that. Neat. But anyway, um, it was fun. It's very family friendly. It's very... Oh, there's even a video of the rainstorm a little bit in there. So you guys can, you know, see how hard it was fucking raining. <laughs> Read the goddamn. And, um, but really fun. The dead salt killed it, dude. I can't believe you missed them. I yeah. can't believe it. Well, you know. I was, I was watching and I'm like, I hope Grimm's was seeing this. I hope Grimm's watch. I mean, and I knew pretty much that you were watching Charlie Parr. Yeah. Like, I, I just knew that yeah. you were watching yeah. Charlie yeah. Parr. Yep, yeah. You, know, you know, and then which else, other ones did you catch? Um, I caught several. I don't know. A lot of really? the bands I didn't recognize. Um, there was a bunch of old guys up there. That was Del, Del McCoury, probably. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Um, right. I don't know. I saw a whole bunch of bands playing. Yeah, but uh, good stuff, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you scroll down, too, you'll it, see It wasn't all great. There was, there was some lousy bands. <laughs> right. But, yeah. Especially early in the morning. I don't know that first guy they had on, but he was kind of Who, annoying. Porky, Lef Porky Lefarge? Yeah, but no, no, he was okay. Well, he yeah, got, he was, he, he's like an old school. You know, you know, you know what he, I mean? he, he was fine until he started getting into those little high notes with, with his singing. Right, right, and he, and right. He, and he tried to get way on up there. Them Cooley boys, I saw them. They're from Eau Claire. They're good. Yeah, I was listening to them from my campsite. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Peter, I don't want to call Peter. Feeding Peter Leroy. Rowan. I see. I saw Feeding Leroy. Yep. Oh, Feeding Le. Oh God, did you see me in, a, in the audience? I, I did not see you in any of the. Oh videos. no, because you know why they have this one fixed camera there. Yeah, I was, so I was like were, right were, at the front for Feeding Leroy both sets. I was. I, right I was at hoping the front you, of the stage. you would you would look at the camera and wave at us, but you didn't. I, I when they said hey Bob, yeah, I turned and waved. Oh, okay. They were we were, we were supposed to say hi to some Bob guy, and so yeah, I forget. But oh my god, I was front and center for Billy Strings. Or not, I mean, feelingly right. I, oh, I saw Billy. So I saw Billy I, Strings. I, I love them. I saw, what? I, I saw Billy Strings. He, he was jamming. Oh, yeah, Billy man. Strings was good. He was Pete said Pertner Sandstone too. Cool. Yeah, I didn't see Pertner either, but see right. the main stage after the storm. It it got all washed away. Oh yeah, I saw so they it. had to put a barricade up to keep everyone away from like the going to the front, up very front, the the rail. Yeah, they had to put that barricade up, which sucks so bad. But and you gotta I, keep people safe. You can't I, have I, people fall. I saw I saw all part of the railroad earth show. Oh okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, see cool. Like. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, and then there was some guys on. Like late at night, that I, I think after the yeah. show was over, right? And they were up there. It was they were still streaming, so I don't know. Oh, they, really? Yeah, and they had these guys on. That it was looked like there was not much of a crowd left. Um, huh? And that was on uh, Saturday night, late after like the day, because the guy came on and he said, you know, make sure you clean everything up, da 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 da. And then right, this, right. And then this other band came on. Yeah. Huh. I don't know who they were. Interesting. But, yeah. Huh. Well, there was a late night stage, and then there was actually a picking 
area with that had benches and a campfire and everything. Yeah. Where all these musicians would just come and show up with instruments and start playing. It was really cool. It was like this jam session. Yeah. That was really cool. That was like my highlight almost because I was able to sing myself and dance and stuff. You know, so it was really cool. It was really cool. Yeah, but, no, it was um, a good, you know, from what I could tell, it was, a, it was a good crowd, good, you know, people right? were, 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 you know, dancing, having a good time. Nobody was out, oh, of, yeah. out of hand or anything like that. And, right. Uh, so, yeah, no, it was nice. It was nice. So Cool. I love that they have, they, they live stream that for free. That's just, like, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's total publicity right there. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. And there weren't that many people watching the stream, a couple hundred Right, but, right, know, it, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's bluegrass, so it's hard to you know exactly. really pull in a large crowd for that that one. Of, right, you know, people that really like it were there. <laughs> sure, you know it. Yeah, they they were. Anyone yeah. that lives in this area, anyway, yeah. was there. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, no, it's it was, a good time. I saw pretty much everyone I wanted to see there. There was a couple of people that I didn't see, like I didn't meet Huff from this chat. You know, but we, I didn't talk to him ahead of time to, like, set up a meeting point. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there were some people in the chat on the YouTube there that that obviously knew you because, I, uh, like, yeah. when they said, where's, where's, where's that moose girl? And <laughs> and some girl replied back, our moose right. girl is there. So Right, yeah, I was there. I'm was, there. Uh, whoever <laughs> was, these people, some of these people in the chat. Those are you. my people from Mixler. Yep. Yeah. My Mixler crowd that doesn't live in Wisconsin. They knew I was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, there was another story I came across, and this actually, I have to credit to Graham Z. Okay. She posted, I don't know if she talked about him. Well, she didn't do any, on her Facebook page. She didn't do any shows this week, so. Okay, but, so this is, must have been on her Facebook page. What is the purpose of the belly, of, of a belly button? Okay, so we all know the initial purpose, like when you're in in utero, it's it, that's what supplies. Yeah, it's your feeding Everything tube. that you need to live right. before you're born. Right. Then you're born, and they cut that off. Right. But you're left with a belly button. Right. 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 Okay, so this is on Quora, and I think I'm saying it's. I'm saying pretty it right. sure. I'm pretty Q-O-R-A. sure it's. Uh, O-R-A. Yeah, Quora. Quora. I'm pretty sure it's a lint trap. Well, it is that. <laughs> but and this this is something I can actually say I didn't it, it it didn't dawn on me before it never occurred to me and I'm pretty old and it's like why don't I know this yet why didn't I know this you know okay so here we go and this is actually from 2017 okay um it's our belly button or N A B H I gift given to us by our creator whoever that is, whatever that is, right? Uh-huh. Anyway, a 16-year-old man had poor vision in his left eye. He could hardly see, especially at night, and was told by eye specialists that his eyes were in good condition, but the only problem was that the veins supplying blood to his eyes were dried up, and he would never be able to see again. All right. According to science, the first part created after conception takes place as the belly button. After its mother's placenta through the umbilical cord, our belly, bu- our belly button is surely an amazing thing. According to science, after a person has passed away, the belly button is still warm for three hours. The reason being that when a woman conceives a child, her belly button supplies nourishment, nourishment to the child through the child's belly button. And a fully grown child is formed in t- 270 days. This is the reason all our veins are connected to our belly button which makes it the focal point of our body. Belly button is life itself. The peak choti, which is P-E-C-H-O-T-I, is situated behind the belly button, which has 72,000 plus veins over it. The total amount of blood vessels we have in our body are equal to twice the circumference of the earth. Applying oil to belly button cures dryness of eyes, poor eyesight, Poor eyesight, over or under working, cracked heels and lips, keeps face glowing, shiny hair, knee pain, shivering, lethargy, joint pains, dry skin. <clears throat> it's not a chakra. It's I mean there's a there's a chakra in that area, but they're not talking about the chakra. They're talking about the actual belly button itself and what is directly behind the belly button 
contains these 72,000 nerve endings. Okay? Okay, so, and you are blood vessels. So it says, the remedy for dryness of eyes, pure, poor eyesight, fungus and nails, glowing skin, and shiny hair. At night, before bedtime... Wait, don't you want Put glowing three drops skin? of cast. No, don't you want? Yeah, glow- you do. So this is how to get this. This is the remedy for, or the remedy to get get it. It's it's poorly worded, article. I'm really grim, but all right, all right. Go on. I'm just reading it how how it's written. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't write it. <laughs> anyway, it says at night before bedtime, put three drops of pure G H E E G or coconut oil. In your belly button and spread it one and a half inches around your belly button. For knee pain, at nighttime before bed, put three drops of castor oil in your belly button and spread it one and a half inches around your belly button. For for shivering and lethargy, relief from joint, joint pain or dry skin, put three drops of mustard oil in your belly button. And it says, why put oil in your belly button? Your belly button can detect which veins have dried up and pass this oil to it, hence open them up. When a baby has a stomach ache, we normally uh, mix hing and water or oil and apply around the navel. Within minutes, the ache is cured. Oil works the same way. Try it. There's no harm in trying. Anyway, I thought that was very interesting. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. Well, what if you have all those conditions? Do you, like, mix the oils up together? Sure. Or just do one one night and then one the next night. You know what I mean? All right. I mean, I I think it makes sense. Right, Kate. It's like acupuncture central. Exactly. Like, I never even, it never even occurred to me that this was a thing. I mean, I think it's really fucking cool. Like, I'm just going to start putting coconut oil in my fucking belly button. You know, at night. Or okay. whatever oil. Castor oil or... It, it, it makes sense, though, if you think about it. Sure. It's not a stupid question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Well, there can can be, but no, I would say it 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 it's a good thing. I mean, we're always talking about self preservation here and everything. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it, 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 it's you know if it's worth it's worth a shot. You know, it, it's not going to kill you. I know that much. Right, right. It's not going to kill you to put coconut oil in your belly, in your belly button. All right. There's no stupid questions, but there are plenty of stupid answers. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, that was the um, things I had to talk about and the things I managed to bookmark uh cool. the week. Cool. Cool. The other thing is... That's going on, and it's it's quite it's quite an event. And I am actually going to participate. What's that? The Rainbow Gathering, the National Rainbow Gathering, is uh-huh. taking place about two hours north of me. And I'm going to go up there and do this thing. <laughs> Never been to one. Um, I've been to Native American ceremonies where I've had to fast and I've had to like do extreme things like no toilets, no you know, no, no running water, that type of thing. Um, why does this work? Why can't I open this? What the fuck? It's not letting me. Anyway, um, let me go to the Facebook page. Uh, this thing is taking place, and I seriously was at Walmart. And I saw actual bona fide fucking hippies at Walmart. Cool. Last night. I wanted to jump on the bus and take out with them. I'm like, hey. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say anything to them. But I noticed the bus when I pulled into the parking spot, right? So I go to Walmart to do my shopping, and I see one of them. And I could tell he was one of them. Because, you know, I'm kind of a hippie myself, too, right? Sure. So this guy hit me. Seriously, they are so fucking brown because they've been in the sun so much that they're fucking brown. Okay. And the guy's wearing, like, a sleeveless shirt, like a, you know, and on the back there's a patch, and it's the pyramid, right, like, from the money. Okay. 
top of the pyramid is an anarchist symbol. <laughs> I'm like, right on, brother. <laughs> you know, I, was, I didn't say that, but I should have. I should have, because he was at the water thing, filling up those, you know, those big blue water containers. Yeah. He was up there filling a couple of them. Oh, nice. So then I spot him at the checkout. He's checking out. He's getting, he's checking out with the water and a bunch of potatoes and toilet paper. Okay. I'm like, I know where the fuck he's going. <laughs> you know? Anyway, the hippies are descending on northern Wisconsin right now. And I drove by their bus. You know, I was being all nosy. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. They have a thing that they call shitters where they dig a trench. And then the, the one that I saw actually has like a board that's got an to actual toilet seat. Okay. So you're not, you don't have to squat. Uh -huh. Which makes it a lot nicer, a lot better, you know. All right. And I don't mean to talk about this stuff, but it's you know, when you go up there, you're not, you don't have bathrooms, you don't have running water, you don't have any of the comforts of home at all. Okay. And a lot of people wouldn't be able to even fucking do it. They'd freak out. They'd be like, um, "I can't do that." <laughs> you know what I mean? And this is called... Like, I need my air conditioning. I need my running water. Like, some people... Most people are wussies. And this is called the you Rainbow know? Festival? Rainbow Gathering. Rainbow Gathering. It's been Gathering. going on since 1972. Okay. And what they do is they move around the country, and they have it in all these different um, national forests. And this year, it's in the Shawamigan National Forest, which is two hours north of Eau Claire. Right. I used to live up there. Hayward is very close to... This forest. I used to live very close to the forest. Okay. I know exactly where it is. I've been to it. I've been to it. Cool. So what they do is they set up these kitchens and everything's free. Money is worthless there. The only way that money is good is if you put it in the magic hat, uh -huh. which is the donation. Okay. 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 Otherwise, everything's free. Everything's free. All right. If you you can do trade and barter though, but everything's free. Money is no good there, and it's basically all about promoting peace and love, and healing for Mother Earth for the Earth. Cool. Yeah, and so it's right up my alley. I mean, like I said, I've done Native American ceremonies where I had to go way up to bumfuck goddamn Canada. Yeah. And it's it's brutal. Like, I had to actually fast for a couple of days. Yeah. But that was the ceremony part of it. This isn't like a... But on the 4th of July, uh -huh. everyone wakes up in the morning, no one speaks for four hours. Okay. And then after the four hours, everyone gathers together in the main meadow and forms a huge circle. Okay. And um, holds hands. All right. And they do the OM. That's what they do, the OM. Right. And this is a healing thing for the Earth. And this is why they do this. Right. This is the main reason why they do this. Cool. So I am going, because even a friend of mine that lives up there that I haven't seen for years, he still lives up there. Uh-huh. And he, his, his parents, he lives at his parents' house, but his parents are both in a nursing home. Yeah. Uh, but he's like 15 minutes from there. Yeah, okay. But anyway, if you guys, I mean, it's really, it's a hippie thing, but it's more than that, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it see, white people, okay, so the, the ceremonies that I <laughs> have done. White people! <laughs> I, I, for lack of a better term, okay. Eastern European, all right? Mm. Caucasians. Um, as a whole, the white race or Caucasian race, I should say, or Eastern European, uh, Eastern European, um, have been away from our traditional ways longer than black people, longer than Native American people. So, we do not know or remember our traditional ways before Christianity came in and all that bullshit, right? Right. Because our our traditional ways are very similar to Native American traditional ways and African American traditional ways. 
Okay. But as white people, we have been away from our traditional ways for longer than those other races. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Because the African American people were still practicing their traditional ways in the 1800s. Yeah. White people, per se, Caucasian, Eastern European, lost their traditional ways like in the 1400s or the 1300s. Right? Okay. So that's why we have no, me, when I say me, we be Eastern European descent, we were more removed from our traditional ways than other races, so we're fucking clueless, dude. All right. Like, oh. the Christianity came in and fucking sucked everything up. Oh, yeah. Big time. Sure. So, what the Rainbow Gathering is, is really a way that See, people... Take, take Jackson. I could. I could take him. But I'm so afraid that he'd take off on me in the fucking woods. Uh, just keep him on the leash. And then I'd be like, where the fuck is my dog? Keep, keep you know? Him on, <laughs> I'd be like, keep, oh my god, you keep, know? Keep him on the lead, you know? Right. I mean, they are. my friend of mine said he already scoped out the site. He's like, there's 500 to 1,000 people there already. It yeah. doesn't start until July 1st. But what they're doing is, there's, apparently, everyone sets up these different camps and these kitchens and everything. Yeah. You know? And... I just need to check it out. Those are like my people. Sure. Well, no, you can't take RVs in there. You can't take. Well, you can take it to it, but you got you have to walk your shit in. You got to park away away from it. Yeah. Because it's in the fucking middle of the goddamn woods. Sounds but, great. And this and this is next weekend. Well, it starts July first. The official. Start of it is July first to the it's July first to the seventh. Okay. But people are already there. All right. Up there. So it's uh, oh all right. So next Friday twenty eighth. It's a national forest, Rome. So you have to fucking abide by the fucking you know. Yeah. Like I have a cart, and I told Matt, I said I need the goddamn wheels on that cart to work. I'm like put air on it. If they don't hold air, I need the tires fixed. Because you have to park far away from the place where it is. Yeah. But I'll let you guys know. I mean, like I said, it, it's people that are counterculture. And, like, I told Zach and Matt, I'm like, you guys are, I could have raised you guys that way. I could have raised you guys in some hippie bus traveling around the country. Sure. You know, but. My their dad would not have liked that. <laughs> my family would have been like, "What the fuck?" Right. You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. I mean, if I was on my own, sure. You know. Yeah. And I could still do that now if I wanted to. You know. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. But now I'm not raising kids, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Sounds great. Anyway, uh, yeah, but they. I have a solar shower, and other people bring solar showers, and there's a and there's lakes there where you can go swimming. So, Lake Owen, oh my god, Lake Owen is one of the most beautiful so fucking lakes I've ever fucking seen in my life. It's right smack dab in the fucking forest up there. So, just get yeah. ready, be ready to be naked. Uh, and and be able to shit in front of people. And that, yeah. and that, yeah. Well, I mean, people aren't standing around watching, but, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's gonna, that part's good. I'll be like, I told Zach, I'm like, you know what? I might not use the shitter. I might just go out in the woods on my own and dig my own hole and do my thing and then cover that up and then it'll be done. All right. As long as you do that. You know what I mean? Then you're yeah. good. Cool. Yeah. So, anyway, speaking of that, I have to pee. So, can we play music? Yeah, we're going to play some music <laughs> right now here. And, uh, All right. <laughs> and, uh... See, my inhibitions will be less even. You know, right. I had to overcome a lot of inhibitions when I went to the Native American ceremony. I had to fast for a couple of days, and I was dealing with a lot of emotions and shit. So it's like, this ain't my first rodeo. Um, I like to pee outside. I, I don't even have to pee in a bucket. I can just squat and pee, you know, yeah. behind a tree or something. Yeah. That would work. Peeing's different. You know, that's 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 different. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, All right then, Graham. I okay. will. Okay. We'll this this back. person, you recognize who's on the screen there? What? I say, you recognize who's on the screen there? Uh, Elvis Presley. Yeah, he's going to sing ACDC's. Whole lot of Rosie. Right. I love Elvis Presley. ACDC's Bring it do, on, do it. Baby. ACDC's whole lot of Rosie. All right. <laughs> cool. All right. Enjoy. We'll be back. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Their sister, Sin, with Fight Song. Before that, we had Weird Al Yankovic and Foyle. <laughs> I love that song, that video. <laughs> yes, it's a big conspiracy. Uh, and we kicked it off there with Elvis Presley doing uh, uh, ACDC's Whole Lot of Rosie. Okay, not really Elvis Presley doing ACDC's Whole Lot of Rosie. Uh, but somebody who did a great job of uh, making it look like Elvis Presley and sounding like Elvis right. Presley uh, doing ACDC's Whole Lot of Rosie. That was cool. Yeah, it was great stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I found this online. And this is from Friday, May 10th, 2019. But anyway, it says, The First Timer's Practical Guide to the Rainbow Gathering. Okay. In case you don't know, like, I've been pretty much hippie eyes for a while here, so, like, a lot of this stuff isn't going to phase me. The shitter thing, I will get over that. I will get over it, <laughs> you know? Uh, okay. And so, because you do what you got to do, you know? And it's it's all part of being human. See, the main thing about, like, even the Native American festivals that I've participated in, is to remind you, basically it comes down to remind you what it is like to be truly human. Okay? It humbles you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. It humbles you. Humbles. And it helps you, or at least for me, put shit in perspective. And right. not getting all hung up over shit that, you know what I mean? There's, little shit, whatever, you know? Right, right. It, just, it reminds you what it's like to be human again. Truly human. Because we humans, especially in this country, we're not fucking spoiled. Sure. We're fucking spoiled, dude. Absolutely. We can go to the grocery store and pick up this junk shit to eat. Or we can pick up some produce, you know? Yeah. We're fucking spoiled in this country. Big time. Yeah, yeah. So, if you want to know more, I will post this link. But I think it's really cool that this is actually taking place in, like, basically my backyard. Um, because usually it's in Utah or Colorado or, you know, somewhere I can't get to, right? Right. So, the fact that it's taking place here pretty much makes me, I have to go. I have to go. Okay. To it. I, I, I just do. I'm a Wisconsinite. I, it, it's here, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So if you guys want to know more about it, check out that article. Yeah. And um, needless to say, Graham, uh, let's see here. I probably won't be here. Well, that's uh, next Friday you will. But right, the week, but, but not the, week the after. fifth. Not the week after. Okay. No. So I will be heading up there. Um, well, it, probably, it, it, it all depends how long you stay up there. So. Well, up, yeah, you yeah. know, I will probably be going up there next weekend, actually. All right. Well, you know, it, it um, doesn't start until the Monday, so. Right. So. But I'm gonna have to go up there and visit with people and hang out. I haven't been up there in that area for a while, so I yeah. used to look like I said I lived up there for ten years. You know. Okay. Okay. So, like, and this, and I'm, you know, gonna coordinate with my friend up there who lives up there, and try to coordinate bringing some food in there. I have to make sure my cart's ready to go, um, and I have to make sure I have like my solar shower and all that shit. So it's gonna, I'm gonna have to get ready for it. But yeah, it should be good. I mean, I wish I could fucking document it. Uh, I can document it after when I get back. Yeah. But not while I'm there, because my cell phone and nothing, none of that shit will work up there. Right. 
it's up there. It, 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 cell phone service, it doesn't work, and I would not have internet, so there's no way I could, like, you know, document it while yeah, I'm no, there. Yeah, that's cool. But that's cool. That's cool. I can still report on it when I get back. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, big things going on. I mean, oh, I'm yeah. excited. I, I mean, I saw those hippies yesterday, and I saw the actual hippie bus. I was like, oh, yeah, it's happening. It's going on. <laughs> It's going down. All right. I'm like, fuck <laughs> yeah. You know? Sure, sure, sure. I mean, so it's like, yeah. Okay. You know, this is cool. Cool. This is a big thing. That's this great. is, like, important. This is good. That's great stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, on a different topic altogether. Okay. Have you ever heard the name Johnny Frank Garrett? No. Are you familiar with that guy? No. Okay. Well, back in, uh, I think it was 1992. Two, maybe 2002, one of those years. Um, let's see, does it say here? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, this guy, Johnny Frank Garrett, yeah, it was 1992 is, is when they finally knocked him off. Um, 81, okay. 81 was when they, when they arrested him. Um, this guy, Johnny Frank Garrett, who was like a low mental IQ guy, like 70 oh, I, yeah. IQ or something like that. Anyway, he was... He he was, you know, he's not the best guy in the world, you know, he stole mm -hmm. some stuff or whatever. But anyway, at this point in time, uh, this guy, Johnny Frank Garrett, uh, he was working outside of this, like, church place where they did some stuff. And and this nun was killed inside uh, the, the place there. Uh, she was this old nun, like 80-year-old nun, was raped, oh, and, raped and killed. Oh, my God. Okay. And uh, they said this guy did it. They and they made up all kinds of different right. facts about what he had done and 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 framed him for it. And they mm -hmm. took him to trial and they wouldn't let any of the, the real information in there about about the fact that they didn't really have this. They say they said this psychic pointed out who the guy was that did it and she, she really didn't do that. Uh anyway they all this stuff. And and so mm -hmm. like ten years after he was in jail, he was a young guy when they first got him and I think he was he was uh, not very old when they killed him off. And this happened in Texas, uh, up in uh, the uh, panhandle up there, up in Amarillo. Mm -hmm. Okay? So anyway, just before they killed him, um, before they took him in to, to, to have the injection, lethal injection, um, he had wrote this thing, this, this curse letter, basically okay. saying... Everybody that's involved in this trial, that that is involved in my conviction, involved in my my murder here, basically, is going to pay. Okay. Then after they well, murdered him, after they murdered him, after they put him to death in the mm -hmm. death chamber there, these people started dying. Wow. A bunch of people started dying uh, okay. after he did this. Um, and, and, and even even but to this day, Texas refuses to admit. Oh, I didn't mention. They found the guy that did it, and the the guy admitted it. Oh, really? The it real a, guy? Yeah, a real guy. It was a Cuban refugee ah. uh, that was up there that had done this before on other occasions. That that had he liked raping old women and killing them. Oh my God, it's disgusting. It is. It is. And then this one just happened to be a nun. Uh, and, and this guy was a uh, just an easy scapegoat uh, because he had actually done work there at the at the church, and so his fingerprints were in there, and and he was outside. And like I said, he was a low IQ guy. He was like beating bushes with a stick and stuff like that. Just you know, whatever. Just, just he was just not you know a bright guy. And anyway, but the letter that he wrote, the the uh, the uh, curse letter that he wrote, according yeah. to the, according to the movie, anyway, some of it was. You know, dr dramatized, drum, dram, dramatized, whatever you say, um, to make it sound better than it was. But uh, definitely was not written by somebody that would have had a 70 IQ. It was written by somebody that was intelligent and knew what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. So it's like maybe he was taken over by a demon or something like that. Uh, eh. That allowed him to... Or, or or allowed these uh, murders to to or not murders but these deaths to occur, start to occur. Um, so anyway, um, 
the reason I bring this up is I, I saw this movie the other night about yeah. about about the story, and, and it's called Johnny Frank Garrett's Last Word. Okay. And um, anybody wants to watch that, I, I have a link for it here. It's over okay. on Tubi TV. You can watch it for free. Uh, oh, Tubi. Okay. Yeah, if you have Amazon Prime, it's on there too. And you don't have to worry about like, you know, interruptions. Oh, okay. Because sometimes on Tubi you get a commercial or two. Right. Okay. But they're really they're. I don't know if you ever watched on Tubi, but they're. It's a really good way to watch movies because they're just yeah like, I've heard yeah I've heard of it just yep. these little short short commercials that they put in someone there. told no, me or posted it here are, are no big deal but you can yeah. watch that movie there and um, I suggest you watch the movie man I think it's, it's uh, frumpy actually what I suggest yeah, you, cool. I suggest you watch that movie it's uh, just showing the way this this evil DA oh man this guy is yeah a terrible terrible guy um, right and, and, well, they can get away with the shit. And he, even his defense lawyer was no better, and and the and the priest at the church that knew right. that it wasn't him, uh, and and he said, okay, well, you know, the DA wouldn't let me bring my evidence in, but he had the evidence. He could have went somewhere and told somebody, and the, and the the reporter uh, that that reported on, on the fact that this psychic, you know, pointed out where it was and said that she knew the truth too. <laughs> and and she would would would, would not come forward and, and 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 so until after his death and people started dying then these people were like uh oh and and yeah the DA died and that reporter died and uh several other people that were involved in the thing died and like I said there's some you know some dramatization I don't know what you, what was that word what, what what would you call that dramatization <laughs> yeah going dramatization. on yeah going on in the movie um so it's not act you know a a purely uh, true movie, but it's but it's good. It's good. It'll, it'll definitely keep your interest in this this poor guy. So people are still trying to clear this guy's name after all these years, and, right? Um, and uh, people are still dying. Oh, well, of course, people die, you know. But um, so, so just uh, yeah, put that name in your head there, Johnny Frank Garrett. Man, he didn't do this, and and the, and the freak. Anyway, if you read that Murderpedia article there. Um, you'll get you'll get a lot of the information that you need. Uh, Murderpedia is, talks about a lot of stuff, man. Uh, it's also out there, like on Above Top Secret and uh, Horror Fest, and, and other sites have have it listed. But uh, I found it very interesting, you know. That, that I mean, and this is not like the only time this has ever happened. Uh, you know, lots lots of lots of people have been. Set up this right. way. Right. Oh, for killed. sure. And, and oh, yeah. killed, killed by the state. And and who is it that was celebrating yesterday? Celebrating, yeah, celebrating the fifteen yeah. hundredth um, execution by by some state or another since the death penalty was brought back into action by the Supreme Court. It's just absolutely disgusting that the United States or any country, for that matter, has a death penalty. It's just, right. it's just, it's just fucked up, and especially when you got stuff like this going on. Right. Yeah. You know, I just, I just, uh, it disgusts me that that me this too. this actually happens out there. Yeah. And, and and you know, and they they just slam that. I don't know David McGowan. Um, should I know David McGowan? Is he I the one? Know. Is he the one that did the original? Uh, the, the original documentary on on Garrett, uh, because there was an original documentary prior to to this movie about Johnny Frank Garrett, and uh, I, it might have been McGowan that did that. Um, right. Either, either way, but I, and I haven't seen that as the original documentary. But the guy that made this movie wrote this movie, the the last Johnny Frank Garrett's last word. Um, saw that documentary, and then he made this film. Uh, about it, so. Um, hmm. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll check out then uh, David McGowan and see how. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not familiar with him, but uh, yeah. All right, thanks, thanks, Benoit. Um, cool. So, yeah. All right. So, so speaking of the uh, the the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the state and and uh, and the death penalty and it's, uh, yeah, 
I, I don't even know what to make of this. I, I don't even know. I don't even have words for this. Okay. So I'll just give it to you as it is here from, from RT.com. We're at Russia Today. A winnable war? <laughs> oh, my fucking God. New Pentagon document shows the United States military thinks so. The Pentagon document is laying out a U.S. doctrine of nuclear operations was publicly available for about a week and then it was made for official use only. What's inside is a chilling reminder that Washington sees nuclear war as winnable. What? Oh, these motherfuckers. Nuclear war as winnable. <laughs> no, there is no winners in that. There... <laughs> um, fucks. Uh, nuclear operations or joint publication 3-72 was dated on June 11th and made a uh, and made private since, but not before it was downloaded by Stephen Aftergood, an activist at the Federation of American Scientists (FAS). It is currently available on the FAS website as a PDF. Uh, the publication provides fundamental principles and guidance to plan, execute, and assess nuclear operations. Right. The rest of it is the, the same matter-of-fact tone, even when discussing, discussing practical consideration of potentially world-ending weapons. The, the, the kind of thinking itself can be hazardous. Right. It can make that sort of eventuality more likely instead of deterring it, after Good told The Guardian on Wednesday. Arguably, the United States military job is to consider all possibilities, and the decision whether to use nuclear weapons is ultimately in civilian hands. In this case, Donald Trump's. <laughs> so it says the Trump administration has paid a lot of attention to nuclear matters, updating the U.S. Nuclear Posture Review last year, and had earmarkings uh, or, and earmarking funds for modernizing the U.S. nuclear triad, bombers, land-based, and submarines. However, Trump also announced the U.S. would leave the 1987 Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces INF Treaty uh, with Russia by next month. The fate of the new START Arms Control Treaty with Russia, set to expire in February 2021, is coming is uh, very much up in the air. In such circumstances, the Joint Chiefs Doctrine stating that using nuclear weapons could create conditions for decisive results and the restoration of strategic stability might be taken as a cause for alarm and for good reason. This is how these people think. This is their their mindset that you can somehow start a nuclear war, take a few or many strikes by some other country's nuclear weapons because you're not going to stop them all as they try and come in and and and, and the radiation is going to fly around the world, uh, regardless of, of wherever. And, you, and they think somehow that you can win a nuclear war. Right, duh. This is fucked up shit. Oh my god. This, this, this is this is just this is disturbing at best. That that this is their mindset, right. and you can bet. You know, all of his warmonger buddies, uh, and and he's got a lot of them, are just mm -hmm. aching, aching to push that button. The, oh the yeah, bomb you know the, bomb the holy living crap out of somebody, and 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 damn the consequences. You know, um, right? It's it's it, it's insanity. It's insanity. So it is. Uh, <laughs> I've seen more. Less. <laughs> just blow, you know, just just destroy the earth with these things, and whatever happens, happens. They don't, they couldn't care less. Right? It's like, duh, you you're still here. Yeah, it, it's it's oh, amazing. They have their bunkers, right? Oh uh, God, <laughs> I'm sure they do. <laughs> whatever. I'm like sure they do. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just it's crazy. Um. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't even know what to say about it. It just, it just, it, it's. <laughs> I know. It's, <laughs> it's, just, it's ridiculous. It's just like really. Uh, yeah, yeah, Hansel, right? Kill them all. Let God sort them out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know how you. That includes you too. Yep. Everybody. You're part of all. Yep. Yep. You're yep. not. 
<laughs> you're part of all. Yeah. <laughs> it's, this is this is the logic. This is the uh, what, what they think or how they think. And um, yeah, not good, not good at all. So anyway, I. <laughs> Oh God! Anyway, so <laughs> next up for you we have, and, and this is a shock to nobody here, to nobody here. Oh, could you not hear me? No, I said this is a shock to nobody here. This next story. Okay. Especially you. Okay. Well, maybe not especially you, but you, <laughs> you included. And this is, okay. it's, it's an old article. It's from, it's from November 2015. Okay. American cops now steal more property than all U.S. burglars combined. I, I believe that. <laughs> so, and that was four fucking years ago. Fucking motherfucking thieves. Uh, no, that, yeah, they're fucking uh, that was, that, that, right. that, was, that was four years ago. So, right. <laughs> and, so now we're, well, not quite four You think it's changed? No, it's gotten worse. Yeah, it's changed. It's I'm gotten sure. worse. Anyway, it says, for decades now, federal governments and their cohorts in law enforcement have been carrying out theft of citizenry on a massive scale. We're not talking about taxes, but insidious power known as Civil Asset Forfeiture, CAF. In the 80s era, laws were designed to drain resources from powerful criminal organizations, but CAF has become a tool for law enforcement agencies across the United States to steal money and property from countless innocent people. No criminal charges required for the confiscation, resulting in easy inflows of cash for law enforcement departments and proliferation of abuse. This phenomenon is known as policing for profit. In the last 25 years, the amount of profit stolen through the CAF has skyrocketed. According to the U.S. Department of Justice, the value of asset forfeiture recoveries by the United States authorities from 1989 through 2010 was twelve billion six hundred sixty seven million six hundred twelve thousand dollars increasing on an average of nearly twenty percent per year in uh, 2008 law enforcement took over one and a half billion dollars from the American public while this number seems incredibly large just a few years later in 2014 six years later that number tripled to four point five billion Wow when we examine these numbers in their nearly exponential growth curve, it appears that police in America are getting really good at separating the citizens from their property. Not just really good, criminally good. <laughs> but to put this number into perspective, according to the FBI, the victims of burglary offenses suffered uh, an estimated $3.9 billion of property losses in 2014. So, burglary, $3.9 billion. Cops stealing from them, four point five billion. Yeah, imagine oh, that. God, that means yeah, law enforcement in America has stolen six hundred million dollars more from American than actual criminal burglars. And First again, and again, that was twenty fourteen, so almost five years right. ago. It's doubled by that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it could be like you said, exponential growth. It's not like they changed their tactic. Right, they they are freaking thieves. And, yes, they uh, are. And murderers. Yeah. Or murderers. and murderers, of course, and murderers. That's the most important. They're fucking murderers. Yeah. So. Fucking costume murderers. Yepper. Well, the fuckers were in costumes. Li licensed, licensed to kill. Yes, definitely. All they right, are. Let's... And get away with it, usually. Yep. All right, let's play some yeah. more music, and then we'll come okay, back and... And, and uh, we, we shall return. We got we got plenty more stories of horror. Uh, we never run out. Horror stories from the from governmental agencies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the list goes on and on. I tell you, man. Bob Marley. It never stops. Yeah. Ooh. Bob Marley. All right. Yeah, we can make it work. We just need them to make it work. Every last one of my get Gong. <laughs> Sorry there, Ben, but you left right before I started playing that song. I don't know why, but you did. 
And uh, <laughs> anyway, that, that's some uh, uh, that's some major league cowboy stuff, man. I don't know, man. Woo. Anyway, that, that was uh, Sarah Shook and the Disarmers singing a song called Dwight Yoakum. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> before that, we had a moose girl request there. Uh, Doors, I light my fire. And we kicked it off with Get Up, Stand Up, Bob Marley, live in Munich back in the June of 1980. So, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, okay. You guys can request songs, but... I had oh, no, I, I had no idea. Can't do. They're not good for freakers. I, I mean, I, I had no idea what that was gonna be. We, you, I thought you listened to so, a little bit of them before you put them on. Oh, uh, if it's a, re, a credit request made during the show, how am I gonna do that? Oh, during the show. Oh, okay, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. That was nice of you. <laughs> Even though you fucking left before you, you know. Yeah, dude. I was like, it was the next song coming yeah. up, and he, and he leaves. What and, the fuck? And, and he would have been hooting, hooting, and hollering. Hoo. Right. Uh, right. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh man. Anyway. So, uh, um. Yeah, I'm going to be going on freaking road trips here. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Shut. I. Be, keep quiet out there. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, I am. Oh. I am doing it. She's doing it. I'm going to the fucking Don't rainbow challenge. gathering. Don't challenge her. She's doing it. And it's going to be beautiful. The rainbow gathering. I need it. It's been so long since I've done something like that. Like, yeah. I can't even tell you, like, how long it's been since I've gotten back to my humanity. Yeah. Like, completely. Like, where you feel humbled. Right. You know? Right. It, it does your soul, it does your soul good, I'm telling you. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah, I'm sure. I've been there, done that. I'm sure. And, um, it, it makes you humble, and it makes you appreciate life more. <laughs> for lack of a better way to word it. Um, uh, you know? Yeah. Like, I mentioned the Native American ceremonies, and... The sweat, well, the first sweat lodge ceremony I went to, I was in dire need. Like I was seriously going to down downhill slope, dude. Right. Mentally, you know, emotionally, whatever. And so I go to my first sweat lodge because I meet some people up there. Because I was working at the res, you know, working at the casino and everything, and I met some people that were like into the traditional ways. Which, unfortunately, most of the people up there, it's sad. It was sad to me because I've always been, like, or into history, right? So yeah. I've always known, like, the story of the Native Americans in this country in some way, shape, or form. Right. I, I've been to uh, Custer's Last Stand, to where that took place. Okay. I felt that. I was there. I could tell this this went down. And where and where did that take place? In South Dakota. At what city? What town? Little Bighorn. Little Bighorn. Custer. Is there is there is South there Dakota. is there a town? What it was called back then, I don't know, but it's called Custer now, I believe. It's near there. It's called Little Bighorn, the Battle of Little Bighorn. Okay. It's where and it's in South Dakota. It's near um, Wounded Knee, kind of. Okay. Uh, sort of. Yeah. Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge. But anyway, um, I had also been to Fort Sumter in South Carolina. Yeah. And the significance of Fort Sumter is that was where the first shot of the Civil War was fired. Right. That's where it started. So many people fucking died there. I could feel fucking ghosts, dude. I could almost see the goddamn, you know. Yeah, yeah. I could. It was weird. So anyway, plus I toured some cemeteries when I was there. Right. Because, you know, when you go to a cemetery in South Carolina, that's an old motherfucking cemetery, dude. Sure. Like, way older than Wisconsin cemeteries. 
because Wisconsin wasn't, in, you know, or South Carolina is an older state than Wisconsin. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Anyway, okay. um, flashback to the sweat lodge ceremony. It's the first right, one I went right. to. Uh, I puked twice after it, and that was a good thing. They're like, that's a good thing. I'm Urging. like, really? They're like, yeah, that's all that shit coming out of you that you've been hanging on to for all this little time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So there is something to it. Kill that duck. You know, and it's it's more than just a sauna. You know, when you're doing ceremony, like, I went to a ceremony, a sweat last ceremony one time, it was like negative 20 degrees out. Right. And you have to be barefoot. You do not wear shoes. So I had to walk, like, I don't know, six feet in bare feet <laughs> in six, minus 20. Six feet? You know? Six feet? Well, yeah, it's not far, right? <laughs> okay. But still, when it's minus 20, Graham, and you're fucking barefoot, it's, you know, come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So this is what I'm talking about. This part of humbling yourself. Okay. You know, you kind of like sub you you what's that word I wanna say? You let go of your inhibitions and you just let nature it, it help you and take control, you know. Right. I don't know how else to describe it really. Okay. But like you're putting some higher power, <laughs> be it even if it's just Mother Nature, in the you know what I mean? Yeah. You're trusting this. You know, sure. that you'll be okay, you know, and it's not a seen thing. It's not something that's not, you can't see it. You feel it, you yeah. know? Sure, sure. So this is what helped me, though. That's more great. than religion, more than, like, my parents baptized me Christian, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, they'd fight on the way to church. Then they'd go to church, and then they'd fight on the way home. <laughs> so tell me how good this motherfucking Christian religion, which they were just going through the motions, too. Wow. They weren't like hardcore Christians at like any stretch at all. I, I, have, I have a story about you know, Christians right here. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. This week, apparently this week, this happened. Thursday, mm -hmm. this happened. Christian group claims thousands of people signed a petition demanding that Netflix... Cancel Amazon's Good Omens. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, Amazon recently released this uh, show called Good Omens. Uh, yeah. And, and it's about an archangel. I saw the first episode. Archangel and a devil or something. It's stupid it's as hell. I did not like All it. Right. Okay, I'm just, well, I mean, I like the uh, actors. We, the actors are good, but the storyline is fucked up. I don't like it. I, it, it, it Totally, it, just, it bored me. Okay? Re it just, I lost interest totally because it was bad. Uh, regardless of that, okay. Amazon released it. Right. And a Christian group known as Return to Order has, oh, been, has been running a campaign to urge Netflix to remove the show Good Omens. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. So, so, so they don't even know right, what to... They don't even know what they're protesting, who they're protesting against. They just want to have a protest against somebody uh, and get rid of this thing we don't like, even if it's not you that's doing it. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. uh, it says the limited... So, so it reminds me of the fact, though, that The Handmaid's Tale, are you, do you, know, are you aware of the show? I, I've heard of it. I've heard it's a good um, uh, well, Revolution or whatever. Uh, right. Okay. So what it is, it's it's like a dystopian reality that's taking place in this time. Okay. Like the present day, right? All right. Where basically the Nazis won, or the Christian right wing again, totally like almost Mennonite, like you know, where women are subservient, right? Okay. So they take over like parts of the United States, and the women that are with child within childbearing age and are able to give birth are assigned to these people in power that are barren. Okay. For whatever reason, okay. All right. So basically, they rape these women to get them pregnant so they can produce children for these motherfuckers, right? So that's part of the story. The other part of the story is it's it's like a dystopian reality where it's totally like law and order and like 
the Third Reich, basically like Nazism, right? You know what I mean? All right. It's that it's Christian based, not the Nazi. You know what I mean? So it's really, it's a really good. You get, it's really hard to explain. You just, if you're interested, I'll look, look at a description of it. Okay. But people are actually women group. Women, certain wi- groups of women are like go, protesting. And when they protest, they dress like these handmaids in the show. Okay. Which is like a red robe and a white hood, like a nun, like a white hat, uh, like a nun would wear. But uh, then the, right. they're the rest of it's red. Yeah, so it's really good. I mean, I'm totally hooked on it. I've been hooked on it. It's, it's, it's in the third season now, and uh, it's really good acting. It's good actors that that are in it. And, and where's that at? It's at, it's a Hulu. Mm-hmm. Hulu okay. original. All right. Well, it's at Hulu. Anyway, apparently but, uh, this, uh, this uh, what's it called? Good Omens story. Uh, right. It's based on a 1990 novel written by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Mm-hmm. Uh, tells the story of a demon and an angel joining forces to stop Armageddon. And I just on a side note there. Uh huh. One of our chatters is actually related or knows that person. Which one? Uh huh. No, I mean Pratchett or Gay Man. Pratchett. Okay. I believe. So he was, asked it, him about it. it, it, it says, you know, he was just talking about in his chat like a week ago that one of his relatives, some way, maybe by marriage, I don't know, someone he knows is in on this show, Good Omens. Okay, it says, it says here that this show celebrates unity during divisive times. Um. Uh, it's it, it basically but, grim. It's the same old story. It's it's a, it's a totally well, boring storyline because I don't it's care. good versus evil. I don't care that's about, basically I, I, what all movies are. I, I, I don't care about good that. Good versus evil. I don't care about that. I care about the, what oh, these, right. these these idiots are doing here. These exactly. Christian group. It says that right, right. the return to order does not approve of forces of heaven and hell uniting for a common goal. See, the return to order, that that's totally right on The Handmaid's Tale. Like that <laughs> phrase right there is something they would use in the, the the show The Handmaid's Tale. Okay, it says that the group the which return is a, to order the the group which is essentially a brand extension of the book Return to Order by some biblical scholar named John Horvat the second created the petition to urge Netflix to pull the series at once and stop <laughs> promoting. That's not going to happen. Well, no, because it's not on Netflix. Right, <laughs> to stop, it's on Amazon. Stop promoting evil. Again, I don't like Netflix, <laughs> no can't, can't, Netflix can't do it if they wanted to because... They can't. Because it's oh. on Amazon. <laughs> exactly. It's a stupid group. They're just fucking zealots, dude. They're just fucking out there. They're but insane. It says, okay? as, it says as of Thursday... These, these people are like Mennonites. Or not, not Mennonites, even Jehovah's Witnesses, where they're like, oh... oh. Anyway, they, they said... Just, they, just fuck that. They said they're they, fucking Christian nutters. They're they, fucking they said they got. They Christian. got... They got more than twenty thousand signatures on this. Of course their, they did, but that twenty thousand—that's nothing. On on this petition to do something, to have somebody do something that they can't do. Twenty thousand compared to how many people watch Netflix or Hulu? Amazon. Or Amazon. That's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> anyway, people are nuts. They, they, people are fucking crazy. The story, okay, they're the, fucking insane. The story made me laugh. That's all I know. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> It's, they're crazy, okay? They're fucking insane. But they'll be the first ones to say that me and you are insane. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, because we don't fucking... We don't follow their doctrine. Believe what they believe. Oh. We, we don't follow their doctrine. All yeah, right, we got to so do, do the last... Sinners, oh. Hey, I know I'm a goddamn sinner, bitch. Yeah, hey, well, we got yeah. to do, do our last set here, so... Okay, let's do that. Oh. <laughs> 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 Eric Burden, Alvin Lee at Rick Wakeman's... It's a crazy world. And Rick Wakeman's house band. Here you go. All right, then. Enjoy. Oh, Black Betty, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's the Ram Jam doing their version of Black Betty. Great stuff there. Monroe's retro release. Before that, except in Balls to the Wall. Hey, we've heard that song on here before. 
Yeah, like last week at the beginning of the show. Anyway, and we kicked it off there with Eric Burden, Alvin Lee, and Rick Wakeman's house band doing a rock and roll medley with a Bebop Alula. Now, Rick Wakeman, I don't know how many of you are all familiar with him or not, and I know we're over our time, but I'm just talking here. So Rick Wakeman, uh, he used to, he's played uh, keyboards with a lot of people. He did, I saw him live with Yes back in the 70s, I guess. Um, on the, I think it was their Fragile Tour, which was great. Anyway, Rick Wakeman, he's kind of a crazy guy, but if you check him out on the YouTube there, and you and you hook up on his channel, uh, follow his channel, whatever, subscribe, uh, lots of good musicians get in there and play with Rick Wakeman. You'll you'll be glad that you subscribe to Rick Wakeman's channel there on the YouTube. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for us here on the Freakers Ball uh, for this evening. Uh, I've had a good time playing music, telling stories, ta talking about stuff, chatting with the chatters, just having a good old time. Yeah, it's not a comfortable subject to talk about, but... What? It's been going on since the uh, beginning of fucking time. What are you talking I'm about? Just like sex twenty. What are you talking about? It, it, I was commenting on the chat. Okay, well that means no. No, sense. get fucking right. real, people. All right. Well, whatever it is you were talking about the, in the chat, All right. it, it doesn't. It's real. Doesn't it's translate. Been great. Have a good weekend, everyone. <laughs> yep. Uh, dork tables tomorrow at noon. I'll be on Sunday at noon. Uh, Hal Anthony. Whatever, done. bitch. You know, fuck. It, 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 it happens. All right. Well, the conversation chill, chill, was chill. there. And that's what we were talking about. You can try to change the subject, whatever, because it gets uncomfortable. All right. Keep, keep that in the chat. Okay. I don't, I don't, does, it doesn't translate to what we're talking All right. about here. Good night. All right. See ya. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yeah. Check out the schedule on RealLibertyBD.com for all the rest of the shows. Thanks, everybody. Peace.